Hello everyone and welcome to a new course on Code Academy. Uh, in this course we're going to be learning how to use the command line. I know it's not really that much uh, related to programming but I think that it can be worthwhile to learn a few things because sometimes you might want to access a file or do some advanced things in, uh, in your computer using your computer and sometimes you can't really do that with just the normal user interface you need to use the command line. So that's why I'm going to do this course on the Code Academy as well as the others that I have done before. Uh, also, this is a time that you can tell me which course you would like to do next so that I know what you guys would enjoy next after this is finished. So let's just get started. The command line is a text interface for your computer. So it's a program that takes in commands which it passes on to the computer's operating system to run. So with the command line you are doing things uh, as a command instead of opening so you can open a folder using a command instead of browsing through different folders for example. So from the command line you can navigate through files and folders on your computer just as you would with Finder on Mac OS or Windows Explorer on Windows. The difference is that the command line is fully text based so you won't see uh, any graphic interface. Uh, if you didn't use it, you will probably be using a uh, graphic interface all of the time, such as browsing through your folders, as I said, and as it said here. So the advantage of using the command line is its power. You can run programs, write scripts to automate common tasks, and combine simple commands to handle difficult tasks, making it an important programming tool. So for example, I have some shortcuts on my computer that allow me to uh, tell the computer after how much time to shut down if you really want to do that. You can also make a shortcut using command line to tell the computer uh, to cancel that shutdown or something like that. Uh, you can also, I'm pretty sure, do similar to that so after the computer is started that after how much time you want it to shut down automatically. So this course is for Unix based systems such as Linux and Mac OS X. An appendix of all commands taught in this course is available in that uh, site, so you can see it at the bottom left there. Instructions. To access the command line, we use a terminal emulator, often just called the terminal. So in the terminal, after the USD dollar sign, type ls and press enter, okay? You should see three items print out below the command. So we have 2014, 2015 and hardware.txt. Click next to learn how this command works. So I don't know what it does. Let's see. What's going on here? Uh, so we have that, ls, and then what we got. So in the terminal, first you see the dollar sign. This is called a shell prompt. It appears when the terminal is ready to accept a command. So when you type ls, the command line looks at the folder you're in and then lists the files and folders inside it. The directories 2014, 2015 and the file hardware.txt are the contents of the current directory or folder, directory equals folder in this case. ls is an example of a command, a directive to the computer to perform a specific task. So our instructions, when using the command line we refer to, a folder, to folders as directories as I mentioned. Files and directories on your computer are organized into a file system. Click next to find out how the file systems work. How the file system works, sorry. So a file system organizes the computer's files and directories into a tree structure. So we are learning this now so that we don't have to learn about it later on and so that we understand what we're doing in the course and not just blindly and mindlessly typing in commands which we don't really understand how they work. So the first directory in the file system is the root directory. It is the parent of all other directories and files in the file system. So just like going into my computer purely just there, uh, kind of like that. Uh, each parent directory can contain more child directories and files. Here blog slash is the parent of 2014 slash 2015 slash. The slash means that there can be something after that so you can enter it in a way. So it's a folder, I don't really know how to explain it clearly. 
and hardware.txt. Notice that there is no slash after that because it's a file or a document. It doesn't it's not it doesn't contain anything. Like it doesn't contain any more documents inside it. Each directory can contain more files and child directories. The parent child relationship continues as long as directories and files are nested. So let's look at this. So this is our root directory, the uh, ellipsis. Then we have blog. And inside blog we have 2014, which has other things inside it. Or 2014 has deck inside it, and deck has monitor and mouse.txt inside it. Uh, blog again has 2015 inside it. And 2015 has motherboard.txt, feb, and january inside it. And you will see, if you open the folder or directory 2015, you will see all of these at once. However, if you open 2014, you would only see the folder or directory deck, or December, I'm guessing. Uh, if you open January, you would see memory and cpu.txt. So you're probably already familiar with this tree structure. Mac Finder and Windows, Windows Explorer represent the file system as trees as well. Okay. And instructions, let's see how to navigate the file system from the command line. In the terminal, after the shell prompt, type, type pwd and press enter. We'll explain this in the next exercise. So we have home cc user workplace blog. I don't see that on here, so maybe it's a different thing. Let's see. Uh, so that's what should have printed out and that is exactly what we got here well not com exactly because we had we have the new dollar sign there but that's fine that's what we want pwd stands for print working directory it outputs the name of the directory you're currently in called the working directory so if you've opened the folder you are in that folder this is basically what you are accessing at the moment here the working directory is blog in Codecademy courses, your your working directory is usually inside the home CC user workspace directory. So, okay, so our it's not it's usually not going to be in blog. It's usually going to be at, in workspace. But for now, we are in blog. Together with ls, the pw command is useful to show you where you are in the file system. So instructions, let's continue with more commands. In the terminal, print the working directory. Okay, pwd, so print working directory, enter. Okay, list all files and directories in the working directory. So that's supposed to be ls actually. Uh, for the second one, it's supposed to be ls. I don't know why it approved it straight away, but okay. And then type CD2015. So CD2015. Again, print the new current working directory. List all files and directories in the working directory. So let's see where we are now. And as you can see, we are now in the folder or directory 2015. And if we do ls list everything that's in here, it's going to be different this time. We have February, January, and motherboard.txt, or Feb, Jan, motherboard.txt. So, what have we learned here? We have learned that CD uh, allows you to go into a different directory, or to enter a different directory. In this case, we did CD 2015, so we entered the directory 2015. Let's move on. Uh, along the course... If you guys have any questions, do feel free to ask them in the comments down below. I will be happy to answer them and I will do it as soon as possible. So CD stands for Change Directory. Just as you would click on a folder in Windows Explorer or Finder, CD switches you into the directory you specify. In other words, CD changes the working directory. So if you were to go into a folder and then go into another folder, you're basically doing CD in a way, but with a graphical interface. This is with a text interface and that's how you do it. The directory we change into is 2015. When a file, directory or program is passed into a command, it is called an argument. Here the 2015 directory is an argument for the CD command. So the terminal does or the command line, whatever you want to call it, does slightly link to programming. It's not that closely linked. I mean, all programs are closely linked to programming if you think about it, but 
yeah, uh, if you know programming, then you will know that arguments are used in programming for functions. So take cd as the function and 2015 as the argument. You're sending 2015 to cd, to CD and you're entering 2015 in a way. Uh, the cd command takes a directory name as an argument and switches into that directory. So change into the 2015 directory again. Okay, let's actually see where we are now. We are already in the 2015 directory, that's weird. Okay, then type cd jan slash memory slash. So cd jan slash memory slash. So we are changing directory to jan or january that exists in here. And then in january, there should be a directory called memory which we are also going to enter. Um, I think that there, that did exist, so we should be able to enter there. There we go, that looks like it worked. PWD, now we are in block 2015 January memory, along with everything that we had before. Let's do ls to list what we have in here. And, okay, this directory is completely empty at the, f at the moment. So then type cd dot dot or f uh, period period or full stop full stop whatever you want to call it with a space in between. Print the working directory again to see the new location. I think that this is going to put us in the root folder. Let's see. It might not. Oops, I did not mean to do psd. I meant pwd. Sorry. Uh, oh no, actually we go up. Uh, yeah, I sometimes confuse that with the other one. We just go up, we do like, uh, you know, the button that's up a folder. So if you do CD, and then two full stops after it, you're going into the previous directory. That's how you move into the previous directory because you can't do CD 20 uh, Jan to go back a directory. So let's do this CD memory. Now we are in memory. As you can see and if you did see the Jan then it doesn't exist if you wanted to go back so if you wanted to go back from memory into Jan you would have to do CD dot dot and now if we do PWD we are in January moving on CD Jan memory so to navigate directly to a directory use CD with the directory path as an argument here, cd jan memory command navigates directly to the jan memory directory. So if you know that this directory exists, then just go to it straight away. You can add as many slashes as you want. Uh, to move up one directory, use cd. Here, cd navigates up from january memory to jan. Uh, 